All right, ladies, well, let's go ahead and get started. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> We're going to be over in Matthew 13. Okay, hold on just a second. There we go. How's that? Oh. Get a little light on the subject. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get us started with prayer. It's been a crazy, crazy day, so I need to center myself. So let us pray, and then we're going to, like I said, start out in Matthew 13. Heavenly Father, thank you so much, God, for this time. Thank you, Father, for the, the opportunity to be quiet, to be still, to sit at your feet, to open our ears and our hearts, and to listen. Father, I pray that you would speak loudly and that we would quiet ourselves so that we could hear. Speak to us, Father. Help us to hear the things you want us to hear, see the things that you want us to see, because I believe, Father, that you are speaking to us tonight through the passage of scripture that you placed on my heart. Help us, God, to be attentive. Help us, God, to be obedient. Help us, God, to say amen. Father, we love you. We praise you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. I'm on this little kick. <laughs> so you guys That's go there. One of those uh -oh moments. It's not bad. It's just something I'm studying out. So I we love the scripture. It talks a lot about the kingdom of heaven is like the kingdom of God is like and then Jesus goes on and he gives these various parables. What, do you, what would you say the kingdom of heaven is like? For you, your own personal, what is the kingdom of heaven like? For me, it's a place to go and take in anything that's there. Okay. I, I see it as a place of rest and a place where I can get all my questions answered. Mm -hmm. And I can sit down talk to Moses, Noah, all of the past people and just get full of knowledge, mm -hmm. curiosity. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Me too. And I get to meet Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, yeah, you know, that's the first thing we should say. <gasps> we get to see the Father and we get to see Jesus and right. we get to hear the Holy Spirit more. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to, over the next few weeks, next time we get together, we're just going to be looking at different passages where Jesus talks about the kingdom of heaven is like, and then he gives us some parable, you know, because he's trying to tell us something. And um, sometimes I think we just breeze through it. The kingdom of heaven is like, blah, 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 blah. And it's just a cutesy little, you know, definition or something. But I think he wants us to dig deeper. So tonight we're going to look at the one here in Matthew 13 about the wheat and the weeds. So uh, the parable of the weeds, starting in verse 24. If I can get someone to read 24 through 30. Okay. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, the, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, do you, didn't you sow good seed in your field? When the, where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No. He answered, because while you are pulling up the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And, that, and at that time, I will, ask, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles and to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. Okay, awesome. Yeah, that made Thank better you. sense. <laughs> All right, let's talk about this. What do you see? Because we're talking about the kingdom of heaven is like. Maureen. Well, I, one of the things I, when I first read it just now, mm -hmm. I, I realized, I don't know if this is right or true, but it just came to me that the king, we are in the kingdom of heaven now, in that we are children of the kingdom of heaven. So right. this, yeah. this specific parable is not talking about when we get to heaven. It's talking mm -hmm. about now. Right. Mm -hmm. And that kinda, just kind of hit me like, yeah, this is not about what I think is going to be heaven is going to be like but the kingdom of heaven the kingdom of god is now it's here now mm -hmm. while we're growing we will grow with weeds which we already know we do we already know it good good wow. that's good 
That was profound. What we're discussing tonight. You know, I want us to look at like what Maureen was saying. We think about the kingdom of heaven is like, and we start daydreaming. Oh, it's like this. And oh, it's going to be that. And he's like, wait, 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 wait. The kingdom of heaven is like, he's he's describing what it's like right now. You know, and in this one in particular, he's talking about us growing side by side with the weeds. What's the point? He's talking about growing side by side with weeds. What would be weeds, first of all? Like Maureen said, we are the children. So we're obviously, are we the wheat or are we the weeds? We are the wheat. We are the wheat. And he is saying side by side with you will be the weeds. Mm -hmm. What is his point in this parable? Go ahead. The weeds could be any, the weeds could be anybody. It could be the world. It could be people that infiltrate the church for their own reasoning, for their own purposes. Um, People who are not truly dedicated to God, but um, want to say they did their time, if you will, um, in church. I I was there. I was there. I went to church every Sunday. Those could be considered weeds. I would consider them more lost than weeds, but weeds, yes. And the coolest part here is that it's not to us to judge because he is the ultimate judge. They tell him, should we go uh, approach them? And he's, he's like, no, your job is not to harvest. When, you're, when that harvest time comes, I will advise the harvesters to do exactly what I want them to do. Yes. Why is that such a trap for us? Because we do. We desire deep in our, well, we don't desire. It just comes out of us to judge Who's weeds? Who are the weeds? And what do I need to do to take care of those weeds that are around me? I, I think maybe um, during our time in other, other relation, relations in Christian, Christian, Christianity, that we got that, that we see someone who's not doing what we think they're doing right. And so we judge them. And then when the Bible says judge, but they, we, we, mis, mis, we misunderstand what he means by judging. Mm-hmm. And that's, I think that's the heart. If we, if we really were taught in the beginning what judging meant, then I don't think we would have been. Like everything else, we, we um, like Kai preaching um, about baptism and, and all of that and not knowing that I was baptized when I was 16, but I didn't know why that I can remember. I was even told why it was just something that we did. And I think a lot of people are happy. It happens to them. And that's why it was so neat when I really got baptized, when I really knew what, what it was all about. Okay. Maureen, looks like you were I was, saying. Yeah. I was going to say that um, judging um, the type of judging that Sherry's talking about comes from a selfish place it's not really judging it's comparing it's a very it's a very flesh humanistic ego comparison i'm better than you Mm -hmm. you're worse than me because of x and i think that part of it comes from a very selfish place um not not the judging you're not the good judging you're talking about sherry where when you are actually helping somebody and giving them constructive criticism. I'm talking about the judging, like, I can't believe she's hearing that. Who do you think she is? And that is not Christian at all. That is a comparison from that person to me and what I would do as opposed to what they would do. It has nothing to do with constructive criticism. That's what I mean. Yeah. Or lifting somebody up. And I think the judging, the Pulling the weeds here, the reason why God doesn't want to do us to do it is because most of the time, myself included, because I'm a woman and that's what we do, because we were <laughs> raised to do that. <laughs> we're working it's on it. Our... <laughs> yeah, we're working on it. It's in our DNA, but we're working on it. It's the comparison, the egotistical, self-fulfilling comparisons. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to say too, is um. The reason why uh, that judging or why it's easier for us to judge is because inherently 
we want to get the best of the best. So if I'm going to share it with you, mm-hmm. when I don't think you actually deserve being, sharing this beauty that God has given, then I'm going to try and find an edge of how I'm better than you, of how you are not good enough or because I've interpreted the Bible to be so individualistic as opposed to community. Like I'm always looking at how I get ahead as opposed to how we right. get ahead. Right. Okay, good. So the sower here, did he plant good seed? Yes, he did. That's what it says. It said he planted good seed. We are God's seed. Did he plant good seed with us? Yes, he did. He did. But yet, right next to the good seed, all of a sudden they found weeds. How did these weeds appear? When did they appear? And then it came in after the good seed was planted. After the good seed was planted, the enemy came in. Now, it just made me start digging into, Satan is not creative. He he imitates God. Mm. He doesn't have the ability to create, but he Mm. has the ability to imitate. So here, the father planted good seed in us. Satan can't create good seed of his own, Mm -hmm. but he can imitate and plant bad seed next to it. He's like, I'm going to come in while they're sleeping. Because obviously if he came while we were awake or while the master was awake, he would have taken care of it, right? So he Mm -hmm. slithers slithers in, plants, or has his, his minions do so, plant the bad seed. And then when they wake up, they're like, what, what, wait, didn't you plant good seed? Why do you think they asked that question? That's an interesting question to ask. I think that's why we always ask why, if God loves the world so much, why is X? Why is allowed this to happen? Why X? Why X? And I think that's, I think that's the all time, uh, overtime question. Why does God not protect? Yes. Because uh, the moment Maureen said that, I'm like, yes, that's true. They asked because after seeing a bad seed, they started going, wait a minute, who are we? So it's kind of like you're starting to question who you are and where you stand. And then, because then after they go, can we go pull it out? So meaning, hey, we've seen the bad seed. Now give us the permission to go check it out. Right, right. Yes, again, going back to right in the beginning, what Maureen said, the kingdom of heaven is light. He's talking about right now. Mm -hmm. And that question is the question that permeates all of our minds. We know that God planted good seed. When I asked that question, did God plant good seed in us? Well, I went, well, yeah, we know that. But the minute we see weeds circling us, coming up around us, bad things, Mm -hmm. We say, we question that, that, that incredible question that Maureen put out there. Well, God, if this was good, then why? <laughs> if this, then why? So what we're seeing is exactly what we see today. It is Satan's way because he can't create. All he can do is imitate. Let me confuse them. Let me imitate what God is doing and make them question God. Why would Satan want us to question God? Stupid question, but why? No, to hurt our... Good. Go ahead. No, I said it's actually a good question. He wants to hurt our faith. Because question t- typically is a fear factor. And where you fear the most is where you trust God the least. Kai Foster. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes yes when the guys came to him and asked the question the servants asked him uh, no they, they asked him didn't sir didn't you sow good seed in the field it's like just enough to question hmm up until that point did they believe he was a good servant yep did they believe he planted good seed yep yes. But the minute they saw something that did not make sense to them, 
Then all of a sudden they question, what kinds of things make us question our God? Troubles, trials and tribulations. Um, close friends, maybe something happening to them or they doing something to us. Uh, death of a family member, a loved one, like things like that. Yeah. Uh, the political climate. <laughs> yes, yes. We have to understand the kingdom of heaven is like right now, what we're dealing with. And he's asking us to take a look at the, through this parable. Are you questioning the goodness of your God? I think the last time, I'm not sure if it was last time, the time before that, our good, good father. Are we questioning our good, good father when calamity comes upon us? Something we don't, don't understand fall, befalls upon us. Do we at that point step back and go, but sir, didn't you, you know, God is saying, I need, this is where your faith really shows itself true. If faith showed itself true simply when we were surrounded by other wheat, doesn't take much faith for that. It's when those weeds start to sprout. He's saying, do you still have faith in me? Do you still have faith in what I planted? Or are you now starting to doubt and to question it? What happens? Anybody plants? Any, any planters here? Anybody grow? Not, Not too much yet. yet. <laughs> what is the process of planting? What does it mean to plant something? You've got get the right, oh, get the right soil. Okay. And then um, purchase purchase um, new seeds rather than old seeds. Mm -hmm. Um water them faithfully mm -hmm. okay talk to them okay you missed one step oh what was that let's see let's see you got to put it in the ground oh i forgot the ground <laughs> <laughs> you got the good soil you got I was gonna say seed. it's not gonna grow in the air <laughs> you got the grit the soil you got the seed but unless you put it into the ground intentionality you've got to plant it you've got to actually dig and put it into the ground why is that process important what takes place during that time patience well, it germinates and then it starts growing and picking up right right the seeds when you think about the seeds they begin to develop roots right? Those roots grow down mm -hmm. before the plant comes up. So during this time of planting, he's saying the father has planted you and it might take a minute because your, your roots are growing down before it starts to come up. Sometimes we get frustrated because we don't see the growth yet. I'm not <laughs> growing. This isn't working. You know, guys, like, you have no idea what's going on underground. But think about weeds. What's the process for weeds? I'm the queen of weeds. Okay, queen of weeds. Okay, queenie. <laughs> All those things, I am, let me tell you, those weeds will grow and you can't spray Roundup on them. Yeah, it kills them today, but those seeds germinate even though you killed the plant and you got 900 more from that one. So what you got to do is you got to pull them before they grow seeds and literally <laughs> pull them out of the ground. Bags and bag. I did 10 large green 25 gallon trash bags this past weekend. 10 of weeds. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> Does weeds have roots? Yes. Yeah, but they're shallow. A little bit. Nope. Well, some of them have quite a bit of. Yes. You, that's why you got to pull them out so they don't have the opportunity to grow into a big plant because then you got to get the double. Because any amount you leave is going to grow right back. Right. At the so, same so your lesson, Maureen, is pull them before they come seeds. Yeah, before they <laughs> seed, yes, get them. And get them when they're small, start. Oh, and they're <laughs> sneaky because they grow pretty fast. They go faster than the, the seeds but, you plant. 
yeah but that doesn't does it not depend on what type what, what type of plant other plants you have around because imagine if you have poppy and then there's a weed surrounding if you pour that the poppy is coming out too right or if you have uh weeds, oh. <laughs> the weed will come out too right i hate weeds so much well if you <laughs> if you get I will some Yes, all right, let us not get off. Let's not get off track. I love what we're saying. <laughs> Listen to what's what we're saying because I believe that is the lesson in there. We hate weeds so much. Maureen just said, "I just hate them so much. I just, I just cut them." That is what God is saying. Wait a minute. I know you hate them. I know you want it gone, but in doing uh. so. In doing so, spiritually, that is, as Maureen, um, as Brenda was saying, if I do that prematurely, I am also destroying the wheat. So we have to look at it, and that's where the faith part comes in. God, I hate it so much. I'm just gonna go take care of it. And he's like, "What did he <laughs> tell? The, what did he tell the guys to do when they said to him, sir, uh, do you want us to go and pull them up?" What did he say? He said, no, wait. He said, no, wait. Yeah, wait. Let them both grow up together until and harvest. Another thing, too, is that what's a weed for me may not be a weed for my neighbor. Right. If I pull out, they may keep, because I pull a lot of flowers out because I don't like the way they look. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Brenda. <laughs> but um, also, the, um, because, the, the reason why, let's say calamity, calamity falls or a certain injustice happens, I guess the reason why we shouldn't pull it out or pluck it out too soon is that there are lessons going to be learned from that particular weed or, you know, happening in our lives that could set us up for later, for the harvest time, where yeah. we will become out, we'll come out richer. That's right. Amen. Yes. There's lessons in every parable. It's not just a cute, beautiful little story. And we have to look at it and go, okay, God planted good seed in me. And therefore, when, when weeds start to come up, that, I sh that should not allow me to start questioning me. Maybe I'm not what I thought I was. Maybe I'm not what God thought I, God planted good seed. And just because there are some things, some weeds going on around you does not take away the fact that you are as good as the father made you to be. He says, now, the next thing is, do you have the faith and the patience to wait for me? Or do you take matters into your own hands <laughs> and start trying to fix it? That is what gets us most of the time. We see it, we get frustrated with it, and we just try to fix it. And like Maureen said, you just hate it so much, you start cutting <laughs> down things that you shouldn't be cutting down. And in doing so, like Brenda said, you miss lessons along the way. <laughs> <laughs> Sherry laughs because we know it's true, right? <laughs> what happens is- I'm just thinking of Maureen. Just Frantically away. Thinking, um, yeah. it, uh, that's a lot of bags to fill. In it's a, a lot of work, but God wants to do as, as far as spiritually, God is saying, let me do the work. Mm. The battle mm. isn't yours. The battle is the Lord's, but we make it our mm. battle. Why do we make it our battle? Because we're not uh, trying. We haven't learned to turn it over to God for us. That's why. I, I think that we all, uh, well, for me personally, I'm a very in intentional, intense, aggressive person. I'm very tenacious. So um, I will make things happen. I grew up in an environment where um, it was no meant I just need to figure out how to do till it, I get what I want. It made me very successful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In most cases, most cases, many cases, if we're honest, God isn't working fast enough. Yes, of course. Yes. He's not fast <laughs> enough. So God, let me speed this thing up for you. 
Let me no, go no, pull no, up no. to weeds. And he is saying that too is showing me or showing you the degree of your faith. It's my impatience, my frustration forcing me to take matters into my own hands. Because in honest, if we think about it, this is a setup from Satan. He knew that he cannot change the goodness of God's seeds. So if God planted a good seed, it's going to come up as wheat. It's not like God can plant a seed and it's going to come up as a weed. It doesn't work that way. If he planted a seed, a good seed in you, you're going to sprout exactly what you are supposed to sprout, which is wheat. Satan can't change that. But what he can do is just corrupt everything around it so that he frustrates you, us, mm -hmm. enough that we will take matters into our own hands. Yes. He can't destroy what God creates. We can go through so many examples in scriptures where Satan can't destroy what God creates, but he can get us to destroy ourselves. Let me get them to do it because I really don't have the authority or the power, but I can get them out of faith and then they will destroy so you look at what's happening here christy i'm sorry we're in matthew 13 we've been talking i know you've been there <laughs> so we're in matthew 13 24 through 30 great thanks <laughs> yeah sorry about that sorry, yeah i joined late but i've been sorry. listening <laughs> but yeah a lot of times he gets to us through our minds if the seed was good then why so we go down that rabbit hole well, if God really loved me, then why is bad things happening to me? If we go down that rabbit hole, mm -hmm. you see, those are the <laughs> seeds that same mm -hmm. minions have come along and planted. And then he allows them to grow because he knows we're going to get impatient and we're going to try to pull them up ourselves as opposed to waiting because God will answer it, you know? The question is, are we naive enough to think that planting good seeds exempts us from bad things happening? But why does that get us as Christians? Bad things happen to us. And then all of a sudden, it's as if God never loved us. What make us, makes us go down that trail? Oh, the, oh, the little faith. Okay. The way we're raised, the, the way we seek family connections, the way we seek relationship connections. Okay. Um, very humanistic for if you think something bad is happening to you, that something, then, then God doesn't love you anymore. Because when, well, for me, I don't know about you guys, but as a kid, <laughs> when, I felt like my parents didn't love me. Right. Right. And that becomes our image of what God is, right? And how he, he loves. Yep. All right. What's going on with, this, with the, the roots underground? Remember I said before it even sprouts up, there's something going on underground. Now we have weeds and we have wheat, but something's going on underground. The roots are getting stronger and longer and, and nourishing the plant up above. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Maureen, what was... They're intertwining with the weeds. That's why if you pull oh. the wheat, it'll bring up the wheat. Right. Because growing into a... Um, right. Exactly. Unity. Exactly. Both of you, exactly what you're saying. Again, remember, Satan can't create. He can only imitate. So the roots of the wheat, as you said, Sherry, is getting stronger, right? They're growing. They're getting stronger. Now, the roots of the wheat... They can't create, they can only imitate. So the best he can do is wrap himself around those roots. As Maureen was saying, it becomes entangled. So when you try to pull them out, they take the plant. Right, so all of this is happening where? In the soil. Underground. 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 There is, and there's a spiritual uh, uh, concept to this is that there's a battle going on that we can't see. 
So when we get frustrated and we take matters into our own hands, we're fighting without seeing the enemy that we're fighting. What do I mean by that? Oh, I have a perfect example. Okay. Um, just on a personal level, um, you know, have, have you ever, well, this, this has happened to me where I've come across people and I, I typically don't dislike people. I, I have no idea who you are, what you are. So I'm very happy and I like everybody. But have you ever come across somebody who hates you and you cannot figure out why? You've done nothing to this person. You don't even know. You may remind them of their mother. I don't know what their issue is. But all of a sudden, this person is a, is literally in combat with you. And you have no, there's no reason for it. I look at that as spiritual warfare. Mm-hmm. I look at it as that person doesn't know why they don't like you, but they don't like you for a reason. And it's coming from somewhere we can't see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you fight an enemy that you can't see, how effective are you? You're not effective at all. Like shadow boxing. <laughs> yes. You don't know what punching. Yes. That's why we have to resist the urge to pull up our own weeds. You're shadow boxing. You don't know what you're fighting. You can't see the enemy because the battle is underground. Or in a term, in terms of we can understand that the battle, as I said before, is not ours. The battle is the Lord. There is a battle going on between God and Satan. It's happening underneath. It's it's the system. Satan is trying to 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 destroy the system in which you are growing up with. And when we get in there and start doing things, we're getting in God's way. (laughs) (laughs) What does it mean when when you hear someone say collateral damage? What is collateral damage? (laughs) You've left a whole trail of people you've destroyed while you're trying to solve your own problems. Mm. Yes, hopefully Christy is a better connection right now. Yeah. Yeah. When we are trying to fight our own battles, we are creating more work for God than necessary. What do you think I mean by that? We're creating more work for God. Well, we we could be hurting somebody's feeling. Mm-hmm. We could be turning them away from God, mm-hmm. which is not a good thing. Like the example that I gave. If I was to get angry with that, which I have in the past, gotten angry with somebody for no reason, like why, why, and call them out on what's, what's your issue, mm-hmm. instead of being loving and compassionate, because that, that person may need me to be loving. I have to love them with the love of Jesus and with God and not, not be mm-hmm. my or at a response of theirs, because they're a child of God too. But if right. we are rude and mean and uh, hateful and spiteful, it may turn them off and mm-hmm. God would have to hard or have harder to get them to come back yeah. but by loving somebody and just saying you know uh, and, and putting aside the um ignore not i'm not saying ignore it fully but not calling it to the attention of right right yeah beautiful god has a plan a plan that we are unaware of so mm-hmm. when we jump in thinking we're fixing something <laughs> we're actually tripping up the plan And God is saying, do you trust me enough to do nothing? Do you trust me enough to do nothing? Most of us are doers. Mm -hmm. (laughs) All women. We're fixers, we're doers. And and the idea of being still and doing nothing is just ah, madness. But I think what he wants us to see from this parable is that when we jump in there, we're fighting something that we're unaware of and we're simply messing things up. Mm. it's a matter of faith the kingdom of god is like this there's a battle going on that you can't see between god and satan Mm -hmm. your role first of all is to trust Mm -hmm. that the seed i put in you is good seed Mm -hmm. no matter whatever happens around you Mm -hmm. you need to not waver we waver yeah it says and then When you start seeing things that frighten you, weeds that are growing up around you, don't take matters into your own hands. 
So more than anything, I want us to see what I gathered from this as I was studying is, this is the way that Satan sets us up. He's like, I'm going to set Brenda up and see what she does. <laughs> I'm going to do this and just see what she does. Why? He can't touch her. Mm. We know that. We learned that from Job. He can't personally touch her, but he can set her up and see what she does. That was the whole story of Job. We're going to set him up. See what he does. So we've got to look at this and go, okay, then the kingdom of heaven is like that. So the world in which we're living in right now is like that. How is Satan setting me up? Think about what you're dealing with in, in, in life today, not even today or, you know, during this time frame. What's your setup? What is Satan tantalizing you with, trying to get you to take matters into your own hands? What kind of weeds are popping up around you? I, the, um, for me, it's mainly finances, like just going, okay, um, am, I, am I willing to trust God that he's going to provide for me and will continue to help me live within my means, even as things get expensive, and it seems like whatever I'm making is not mm -hmm. is not as impactful as it used to be. So then it's more of okay, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do to increase the money? Yeah. <laughs> and then guys like, well, that's not gonna go through, that's not going through yet, that's not going through yet. But then also trusting that. God already sees, like, the, the moment of pure clarity where I sit down and go, why am I even, like, stressing out? God already sees my predicament, and he's already working out things behind the scenes. Like, I believe that, right? Right. But then the moment when maybe uh, I go, oh, I need to fix my windshield, then I go, how am I going to get, or how am I going to fix it? that's when the wheels start coming up, Satan sets me up to go, God will not take care of that. But yet I know he will, you yeah. know? Yeah. Yes, yes, good. Yeah, the, the parables, they're so simple that we can just bypass them. Like I said before, mm -hmm. I want us to, as we start digging deeper, I don't want us to bypass the parables because there's, they're, they were given for a lesson. What's mm -hmm. the lesson in it, you know? Okay, God, what you're telling us is that Satan is trying to set us up. We need to be faithful and remain still and wait for you. We need to understand the battle isn't ours. And we need to be aware of what the setup is. When the weeds are popping up, I, I should be able to say, set up a mm -hmm. trick. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that I'm not so easily triggered. I know for me lately, I was sharing it with somebody, I may be repetitive here, maybe I am, sorry. I just, I've just been really, God revealed to me the biases within me. We're in a strange climate, different things pop up and I can have opinions mm -hmm. and go, why is that person like that? Why is that person saying that? Why is, and God's like, mm -mm -mm, weeds, weeds, <laughs> weeds. So it's just been on my heart for the last couple of weeks of, I will not be distracted. I will keep my heart clean and clear. Mm -hmm. I am not going to let biases creep in. It's not like my opinion is better than that person's opinion. Those are simply weeds. It's a battle going on underground between God and Satan. Satan is trying to get BJ off her course. Mm -hmm. If I give in to that, then I'm going to create a whole lot more collateral damage for God to have to come back and clean up. So I want us to see there is a battle indeed, but it isn't our battle. Very divisional. Yes, yes. There is something called the, um, the law of first mention. Have you ever heard that before? Nope. It's in, what does yeah, that mean? In theology, you, you, it's the law of first mention. So the first time something or someone is introduced in scripture, then you see that there is an ongoing through line law that follows them. So the law of first mention, as far as Satan and the serpent, is that he's always slithering wherever God dwells. Mm -hmm. That's the first time we see him. 
So here in this passage, uh -huh. we're seeing him again, slithering wherever God has planted his seed. So in the Garden of Eden, God planted the seed, Adam and Eve. The serpent slithered in and he tries to distract them, convince them otherwise. Again, he can't destroy it, but he can corrupt it. He can corrupt mm -hmm. the environment enough to make them question God's goodness. Here we see the exact same law. God plants his seed and it is good seed. And then in slithers mm -hmm. <laughs> Satan and plants his seed next to it, attaches itself, almost as the serpent did, to whisper, you're not good. If you were good, then why is this popping up? So mm. look for the law first mentioned now. As we go through the various mm. parables, look, okay. at Satan. look for where he slithers. Look for his, his MO, which is mm. he cannot hurt us. So we've got to get that out of our heads. He cannot hurt us but he can trick us mm -hmm. into hurting ourselves. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yep. Amen. Yeah. So that's all. I, that was just, it just really hit me as I was studying this <laughs> out. We're going to go through a couple of different parables. The same process is just to find Satan <clears throat> as he slithers in, but to remember he cannot, what he can do and what he cannot do. Give me some feedback and we're going to close it out. I loved it. I think that as a whole, um, our Christianity and the way that we learn to study, again, when I say our, I'm talking about from my generation, yes. is that we went to school on, well, I went to church every day of my entire life when I was a kid, but did I grasp anything? No, yeah. Yeah. no. You just listen and your mind wanders. And this is a really, it's a really a great blessing to, because I, I, I can't even tell you how many times I've read that. I can't even tell you how many times and to finally stop and tear it apart and learn from it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's a desire. Brenda, were you about to say something? Oh yeah. Like to add on to both of you, what you say, and also that we're in the kingdom of heaven. Like we're in it. Yeah. We can't just sit there and go, oh, when I die, then I'll be like, good for you. You're missing <laughs> out on, <laughs> on yes. like actually really applying the relational aspects of God and uh, like being in a partnership with God in such a beautiful way. It yeah. is. So being able to be patient with our, um, like this story just teaching us to be patient with the color, with whatever life throws at us mm -hmm. to trust that there's a lesson and a, there's something that adds to the bigger story of our lives and we need to wait and see what God is doing. Yeah, yeah. He ends it, I just want to end it with this last part of the scripture in verse 30. It just says, uh, sorry, 29. No, he answered, because while you're pulling the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. And then he says, let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters. Mm -hmm. He goes on and explains what's going to happen. Again, he's saying, guys, trust me. Trust me. Just because it doesn't make sense for you or just because it frustrates you or angers you, don't take matters into your own hand. Allow me to bring it all the way to fruition because mm -hmm. I do know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah he does if <laughs> God's desire is that we should not even question that yes his desire is that he doesn't lose any of us mm -hmm. he's saying I don't want to lose you so I don't want you yanking up thinking you're yanking up weeds and you're destroying wheat so just let me handle it let them grow up together and when the time is right I will do it. I will tell the harvesters what to do. I will be able to, to take out the wheat and take out the wheat mm -hmm. without harming any of my children. It's a matter of trusting God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Awesome. All right, ladies. Thank you for another wonderful Tuesday. Yes. Thank you.